Uh, I'm Steve Compton. I grew up here in Greenville as a Wesleyan Methodist. I went to Furman University, and for many years I wandered in the theological wilderness, crossing over the uh, River Jordan metaphorically. I came to the Unitarian Universalist faith in 1995 in Charleston, South Carolina, where one of the oldest Unitarian churches in anywhere, and certainly in the South, exists where the cornerstone was laid in 1772. Uh, so the Unitarian means one God, not Trinitarian. It comes out of the Puritan Congregationalist tradition out of England primarily, brought to this country by the scientist and theologian Joseph Priestley, a great friend of Jefferson and others. Many of the founders, as you probably know, were Unitarians. Another tradition coming out of England brought by James Murray. I turned it off. What did I do? Here it comes. Is it back on again? Thank you very much. Uh, Reverend James Murray brought over Universalism, which is why I changed the sign from this to this to reflect both of our unified traditions. Uh, that simply means that God, in his view, and in Universalism's view, God is too good to send anybody to hell. There is no hell. Good news, there is no hell. That's the message of Universalism. We all have the possibility of salvation. In 1961, the two traditions joined together formally to form the UUA, and that's what we have today. Now, here in Greenville, South Carolina, a group of liberal folks led by the journalist Gil Rowland, Greenville News fellow, were meeting together about segregation and social justice and discovered that they might, in fact, be Unitarians and founded the Greenville Fellowship in 1950. And we've been there ever since. We've moved buildings, but we never moved our faith in social justice and peace. And that's who we are. Uh, we work very hard. We're the second largest UU congregation in South Carolina, 385 strong, uh, 2 million across the country. Not huge, but significant. And you will find us oftentimes wearing this yellow t-shirt or sweatshirt in the front, in the midst of just about every social justice movement, uh, uh, protest, uh, any time when there's something going on to change the world, we are very proud to be among many of the rest of you as well in that forefront. That's who we are. 2008, a UU uh, uh, church in Knoxville was attacked by a man with a shotgun. Two were killed, seven were wounded, and he very explicitly, he lived through the attack and is now serving time. He said he went there to kill liberals who were giving him and the world a very hard time. The shirt I'm wearing, standing on the side of love, is an explicit response to violence. We answer violence with love. We put ourselves in positions where we do not answer that kind of violence with violence. We believe love and understanding trying to, to, to learn about other faiths and other people is absolutely essential and we really practice that. We have a very explicit class that we have in compassionate communication that many of us have taken part in. And we believe in listening and understanding other faiths. Our faith itself draws from many different traditions and, and, and we have many different traditions come and in our pulpit. Uh, Rabbi Marco sitting next to me has been in our pulpit. People from First Baptist, uh, from the Muslim faith have come. Uh, all kinds of different faith come to our pulpit. We think ignorance and fear is the main cause of violence and peace, therefore, will be enhanced by understanding and listening to each other. I want to brag about my congregation and my uh, denomination and also give a compliment to at least one other uh, congregation that's represented here. Uh, the Unitarian Universalist Association was the first uh, to give sanction to actually perform a holy union, a marriage ceremony for same-sex couples in this country in Boston a number of years ago when our president, then William Sinclair, performed a ceremony. And, and, and that took guts to stand out and say, these people, these two people, deserve just as much respect and support for their love and their family as anyone else. That's the kind of thing that's also going to be required to make peace in the world. Now, I also know of at least one congregation here in Greenville that in more recent times has gone through what I think is a tremendously laudable process, First Baptist of Greenville, under the leadership of 
of your minister, Jim Dan, and the whole team to bring that congregation to a place where they are now accepting and supportive of same-sex unions, of LGBTQ people. That is, is tremendous because when we bring these people, we, we support them and love them and, and allow them to have the same kind of support of their families that anyone else has. This, this, this brings peace to the world because people now see them as people, as, as healthy families, as part of our community. And, and don't fear them anymore. The people that fear folks like that are the ones who just don't know them, they don't know their families. So I wanna, I wanna thank First Baptist publicly for, for what they've done. That, is, that has been wonderful. And, and for a Baptist congregation to do that, I think it's, it's just an amazing thing. I, I'm a social worker, a psychotherapist, and I teach anger management. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've dealt with management to individuals and groups since 1982. I've worked in a prison for 12 years and, and taught domestic violence perpetrators anger management skills. Uh, so I have some experience with this. And, and I will tell you that in my opinion, the serenity prayer is a good starting point. If you can do something about it, and it's on your conscience that you can do something about it, then you must do so. There's many things that we must accept like 385 is going to be a mess and it doesn't make sense to get into a conflict with individual anonymous people driving other machines and let that go. If the rain and the cold bother you, let that go. But do not, do not ever let injustice go. If you can do something about it, you must. And peace comes then for me in that process. We must identify and continue to work with other brothers and sisters on these issues and as long as we are doing that, then we can go to sleep at night and say, I did it today, tomorrow I will pick it up again. And we must continue to work for that because this world has, as somebody said, enough for everybody not to be woke. There should never be one child go to bed lonely, scared, and hungry on this planet. That is unacceptable. And as long as that happens, we need to continue to work toward that end. But I have peace in my heart some of the time when I know that I have done my best to correct that situation. Thank you for your question.